based on so good morning friends am i audible yes you are audible yeah we hear you so, good morning friends uh, on this uh, sunny sunday today we are assembled here um for a discussion under the um, impri that is impact policy research institute new delhi on a series that we had started more than 2 months back on the issues related to the state of economic development in south asia under its eco development discussion series and that came to our mind looking at the changes in policies frequently by the several governments across the world not only in south asia but we have taken up the south asia in order to mitigate the problem arise that has been coming up day after day newly due to this covid 19 pandemic also other issues were there to tackle that like international trade issues environmental issues so different governments had taken necessary measures over time and with along with that this covid 19 added which came like an adding salt to the injury in this uh, economic development phases that had some adverse consequence as well with the uh, applications of the modern not environmental technology or adversing affecting that so in this series uh, today we have taken up an issue on the state of bangladesh economy in the time of covid 19 its impact and how to go forward exactly on rural development we had one discussion and the government policies the historical perspective professor elias hussain had given a lecture also in the beginning of this discussion series about bangladesh we also have some of this uh, discussion series on the trade aspects from an expert of uh, nepal then from india also on the environmental issues how involved in the designing of the housing and the sustainable progress of bhutan then disaster management and the government policy response in sri lanka so almost all the south asian countries one by one by round we are trying to address several issues that are cropping up today with us i welcome dr professor famida khatun who is an executive director of the center for policy dialogue and also the other panelists including professor krishnaraj of isaac uh, professor hilaluddin and some more dr orjun from impri itself i think dr simi mehta is also present there and some more in the way they are joining us to say about something about dr famida khatun I found a long list, so it is unending. She has achieved a lot during his career so far. Currently, she is the executive director of the Center for Policy Dialogue, which is a think tank in South Asia. And she did her BSc, MSc, both from the Jahangir Nagar University, well known to us also when I visit Bangladesh. She did another master's on environmental and natural resource economics from the University College London and postdoctoral from the Art Institute of Columbia University as a Fulbright Scholar. She also had the accomplishment of leadership decision making at the Harvard University in 2019. Prior to joining at the Center for Policy Dialogue, she was a research fellow in the Bangladesh Institute of Development Studies and also environmental specialist she worked as a, in the UNDP as an economist of USAID program in Bangladesh. And she undertook some part-time teaching also in some universities in UK as well as in, his, in her own country, Bangladesh. She was a visiting fellow of the Christian Michelson Institute, Norway, Korea Institute of Industrial Economics, IET, and South Korea, and Center for Studies of Science and Technology System in India. She 
regularly writes several articles, numerous articles he has published in national and international journals, and also in various edited volumes, I saw. And she is engaged in various policymaking studies in various bodies in different capacities as a member, as a project director, like that. She is currently a member of the panel of economists of the eight five-year plan of the Bangladesh Planning Commission. She is also the member of advisory committee of national human report development reports to be prepared for the economic relations. Now there is a long list, so I don't want to go in brief in various national and international bodies, she is engaged also. Now, if you look at the Bangladesh economy, just in the very first series lecture in the introduction, I had told that we are also very happy to see the progress of our neighboring country, one of our neighboring country, Bangladesh. Even there is a prediction recently that it is best resilient to the, in its measure to the COVID-19 situations. And even in the per capita income, it may surpass or ways of uh, in India slightly in the recent estimates. In the past few years, through its uh, Grameen banks that uh, microfinance uh, measures and other policy measures, uh, it achieved a lot of rural infrastructure, agricultural developments and aspects. In the human resource developments also, its uh, rate of growth is much, much mm, prominent in comparison to the other South Asian countries. In healthcare measures also, we can see and recently it also crossed the from underdeveloped to the developing country status and there is an estimation that by 2030 the measures the government has been taking that to achieve the country or uh, to achieve that level of the upper middle income country in the world so the progress definitely is a notable one and still there are there may be some loopholes and how to mitigate that the problems are there from environmental issues, sea level rising, global warming, and some of the diseases that may crop up because of that, because of the displacement of the human population from the low lying areas and so on. So it is not that it is a very good or smooth journey. So several policy changes and the human efforts, coordinated efforts is needed to achieve the target that it has. So in that perspective, on this topic of the state of Bangladesh economy in the time of COVID-19 and how they could successfully uh, mitigate some of this problem and reduce the Im adverse impact of this COVID-19 and going forward, we are looking forward to hear from Dr. Fami Dakhatun. I welcome her again. Now the floor is yours, madam. Please go ahead. Thanks to all. Thank you very much. I'm really humbled by the kind introduction uh, you have made, really. Um, so I don't know how far that reflects me. I am really a, a, a humble researcher. And uh, so, and um, I'm also honored to be here today. Um, I really appreciate and I wonder how did you select me <laughs> to um, talk in front of this August gathering and uh, with you, um, your organization is one of the important and very um, relevant one, which deals with a lot of issues. I have, uh, I was going through the websites and found so many interesting issues you deal with. Uh, anyway, and I also I'm also very happy to see my you know uh, my uh, country uh, economist Dr. Helal, who is also a very renowned and very good very um, uh, good economist and the scholar. Uh, so and encouraged uh, in his presence. Um, the presentation I have, it's a bit quite longish, but I will just summarize and will not go uh, page by page um, because uh, I, I will try to finish by 20 to 25 minutes, within 20 to 25 minutes, so that we have more time to discuss uh, uh, the, uh, during the Q&A and comment session. That's more interesting rather than you know, going through the slides. Uh, but slides will just, you know, act as a guide to me. 
um, and uh, some of these slides are, I mean, some of the numbers are not also very updated. Uh, so, uh, in fact, uh, it's some numbers are quite too, you know, quite difficult to have. Uh, so, regarding the Bangladesh economy, you have just, you know, Dr. Paul, you have uh, just made a very pertinent um, points and you have really succinctly you know, summarized the state of the economy of Bangladesh and some of the South Asian countries indeed and you very well reflected in your <clears throat> introductory remark. So, um, in fact, uh, in Bangladesh, the um, the outbreak of uh, outbreak of COVID-19 was in early March. Uh, I think the first case was identified in uh, on 8th of March. Uh, so since then, um, they, you know, it, it has started, but uh, initially there was not much, you know, um, understanding on what was happening, but then quickly uh, towards the end of March, the government of Bangladesh had taken a lot of precautionary measures to deal with this you know, health issues, and then later on also to deal with the economic issues. Um, so before uh, the uh, outbreak of COVID-19 in Bangladesh, the economy of Bangladesh was doing very well. Um, in fact, in the financial year 2020, which spans from July 2019 to June 20, uh, 2020, during that um, financial year, uh, the growth of um, gross domestic project product was projected to be 8.2 percent and then in the previous year it was achieved and the 8.15 percent was achieved so um, in continuation of that high growth we had projected a similar type of growth uh, before the outbreak of covid but as you know that covid 19 uh, has um, you know spread from health impact to economic to the economy and to the society uh, it, itself so the economy has been affected through multiple channels so uh, not uh, only from domestic economy but also from the external economy because covid has affected the whole world so that um, you know um, that impact is uh, visible in many uh, sectors of the uh, sec of the economy. Now, um, are you sharing slides? Oh, 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 you can't see. I thought I, I was sharing slides. You can't see. Oh. No problem. Yes. Uh, that's so. Please share. Yeah. yeah. Are you? Can you see? No, no, it has not come yet. Please. It hasn't come. Okay. Now it's coming. Uh, yeah. Now coming. Coming. Oh, coming. now see. it is. Also, oh, sorry. Um, you can go full screen also. Full screen. I'm, yeah, I'll go full screen. Now. Yes, and then you can start from the start slide. No issue. Slowly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Right. So now let me just you know uh, show some of the projections which are made by various organizations, including uh, the government of Bangladesh. But some of the um, estimates, estimates are quite depressing. Uh, in, and also, uh, as you know, that these estimates are really um, not just permanent. It does, these are being revised every quarter. For example, you know, the World Bank has estimated that in 2020, uh, Bangladesh's growth will be 1.6 percent, and in 2021, it will be 1 percent. Of course, they again, as I said, that they revise it in International Monetary Fund also. Uh, you know, so uh, they um, they also projected a growth. All these growth uh, numbers are lower than what has been uh, projected by the government. In fact, from our center also initially we have, but we you know these numbers will definitely change now. We also initially estimated that the growth for tw fiscal year 2020, which is now gone, now we are running fiscal year 2021 so uh, so the growth could be uh, 2.5 percent but uh, the government of Bangladesh has um, estimated that in the fiscal year 2020 growth was 5.2 percent one of the reasons they mention is that that COVID arrived in March when um, when 
now almost nine months of the economy uh, had passed. So it, the economy was not affected, but some of the economists also argue that during 2020, the many of the economic indicators were not doing already, even before COVID-19, um, the, uh, the export or the uh, private investments, revenue collections, all these you know, indicators were uh, not up to the mark as projected. So now, uh, due to COVID-19, countries are, in, you know, are facing various challenges, including unemployment, poverty, and inequality. And of course, in Bangladesh also, this problem is not uh, a unique one. Um, Bangladesh, as you have mentioned in the beginning, that during the last five decades or so, Bangladesh had done quite well, uh, in fact, remarkably in many areas. One area is, of course, the uh, gro growth rate. And uh, because of gro high growth, uh, we, could, uh, we could achieve a higher per capita income. And we could also reduce the uh, rate of poverty um, substantially. Um, and uh, the economy, there has been also a structural change within the economy, as many economies, most of the economies follow the trend that from an agricultural economy, it uh, moves to the manufacturing uh, sector and then uh, towards the services sector. So that structural transformation has also been experienced in Bangladesh. But having said that, as you have mentioned, there are some you know, loopholes, some uh, weaknesses of the economy. In fact, many, you know, even the developed countries also face these challenges. One is that inequality, that growth has not been distributed equally among all sections of the population. So we see that that's why uh, top 5% of the population own to about 28% of the national wealth and bottom 5% own only 0.23%. And also the growth has not been able to generate adequate employment for the people. Um, youth unemployment is 10.6%. Um, and though national uh, unemployment rate is 4.2%, which is not so bad, but the uh, Bangladesh has a demographic dividend. People are, uh, most people are young, but we are not being able to generate adequate employment for them. That is another challenge. And because now of the COVID-19, uh, there will be much more pressure on the economy and uh, it is a new, poor has been created um, and it, many estimations have shown that um, there will be additional um, poor people by, you know, it will increase by 1.7 crore Mil, uh, seven crude or 17.5 million more poor people could be there because of that, uh, because of the poverty, you know, increase in the poverty rate, which is going to be another pressure. And also a lot of people, as, uh, as uh, you know, that uh, even in India and many other South Asian countries across the world, that people, those who have um, lost their jobs. Most of them are in the informal sector. They do not have um, a monthly wage. They Most of them have a daily wage. They do not have any contract, uh, employment contract, and these are very low paid uh, jobs in the informal sector. So those were the jobs, um, and many in the service sector also. So those were the jobs who have been hit hard, and they are, in fact, yet to um, get back their jobs. That is uh, another thing. Now, I'll just quickly go through the channels uh, through which the economy has been affected from the global level. You can see that since Bangladesh economy is now integrated with the global economy, almost 40% 40, 40 of the economy is integrated uh, with the global economy through a trade, through uh, investment, through remittances, uh, and through foreign aid. So any 
impact on the global economy is going to uh, show up in Bangladesh economy also. So we can see that the, there has been disruption in the global supply chain. Initially, it was really very bad. Now, as the economies are opening up, it, there has been a little bit of less pressure, but not totally um, has it has vanished it's still there and then global trade slowdown as you know that um, international organizations have also predicted that global trade will slow down um, and which is going to also have an impact on Bangladesh global arts uncertainties because though now at this point in time many countries are um, are uh, going for vaccines but still one doesn't know that how long this COVID will stay and how long it will take for each and every one to get vaccines. So there are a lot of global uncertainties. And then in general, the global economy has slowed down much more than Bangladesh. And you know, so many countries, the larger economies, um, they, are, they are experiencing negative growth. And in future also, they will, their growth will not you know, turn around very quickly, except for China, most of the countries are yet, you know, struggling uh, to revive their economies. So these have, um, these four, uh, you know, areas, these had impact on the other indicators of Bangladesh economy, as I mentioned that in the end, um, you know, through global supply chain, our revenue generation had been affected, private investment, uh, public investment um, had to be, you know, some of the investment uh, projects, those have to be slowed down because we have to generate more resources. And of course, at, during this period, invest global investment, global FDI, um, that's uh, had also, that has also slowed down. Um, then in case of, uh, Remittances, we had uh, some, you know, uh, we had estimated or not estimated, but, you know, it was just, you know, because of the channels, we um, guessed that there might be an impact, but I'll discuss it later on that there, this, the case of remittance is a, is a, is an outlier. Uh, we see a lot of sil silver lining in that, uh, but again, um, international trade has been, uh, if, impacted as well, both import and export had been affected. Now, within the domestic economy, there are, there are also uncertainties. In fact, uh, like other countries like India also, we had um, a lockdown during April and, um, April and May. And during those periods, the domestic economy had been affected to a great extent. The supply um, system, the supply chain system had that had been disrupted, transportation, and uh, supply of other raw materials within the country and had been affected. The essential commodities also could not be you know, transported from one place to another place. Public, uh, private investment, which was already um, very low compared to Bangladesh's requirement. Uh, in fact, private investment GDP ratio has been hovering around 23% for the last five, six years, which is a disappointment for us. Uh, that uh, has also been affected during COVID. And there is also, I mentioned that earlier, that there is a in pressure on public expenditure. And also overall economic activities have been you know, impacted. So these will, uh, these were expected to have impact on um, the economy itself, the supply system, and also the food security. But thankfully, uh, Bangladesh's food security has not been affected. I'll tell again uh, when I'll discuss a little bit on how Bangladesh has managed in terms of dealing with COVID-19 and this food situation and all the other you know, areas where Bangladesh has managed how, uh, I'll discuss later on. Now, the measures taken by the government, this uh, just immediately after um, this COVID-19 had affected the economy, the government had, had announced a number of uh, stimulus packages for uh, various sectors, for large industries, for export-oriented sectors, for cottage, medium, uh, small, medium enterprises, and for the agriculture sector, for, for uh, many sectors, and which is about 
this is now 3.7 percent but i think it has increased a little bit you now because the government had also uh, announced some stimulus package uh, lately i haven't been able to you know collate those numbers but the share of the stimulus package is about 4% of GDP, which is not bad for a country which is least developed, which has resource constraint. So um, that is that was quite a prompt and very useful decision uh, move for the you know for the for those who are affected. Um, and also apart from the you know uh, stimulus packages, stimulus package also uh, had um, the component of. Uh, support to the poor families through various social safety net measures. But one feature of the stimulus package is that this is in fact uh, mostly in terms of liquidity support. More than 80% of the whole stimulus package is the liquidity support, which means, uh, in other words, which is the uh, credit support to those who are affected. So they will take loans from the bank. And in order to create um, fiscal space or space, uh, liquidity space within the bank, the central bank had undertaken um, a number of measures to uh, create uh, more liquidity. Uh, they had increased the CRR credit uh, reserve ratio, uh, decreased the ADR advanced deposit ratio. So these had created some space for um, them to uh, provide loan. Uh, so here I have, but I, I'm I, I think it will also uh, a bit different, but this was a um, picture about uh, month back or so, uh, how the other South Asian countries uh, have announced their stimulus packages, what is in terms of per capita. Um, we see that Bhutan uh, has the highest per capita you know, stimulus package. Uh, one, one advantage could be that Bhutan is a less populated country, so that's why it is. But many other countries have also you know, provided substantive uh, stimulus packages to deal with the COVID-19 experience. Now, what has been the experience so far? Um, I would say that uh, some of the indicators which ha we have seen, the early indicators of uh, financial year 2021, that shows that um, Bangladesh has managed uh, somehow to stay afloat um, to stay afloat during uh, this COVID-19 so far. Um, uh, though, as I've, I have mentioned, that economic activities can, uh, have been you know, squeezed, but some of the uh, indicators have shown uh, a good um, performance. <laughs> and uh, and as uh, you, you have mentioned in the beginning that, you know, according to IMF also Bangladesh's GDP growth is going to be higher, uh, GDP, per capita GDP is going to be, you know, higher even uh, than India. So um, these, I would say that some inherent uh, strength has uh, worked well. Um, I would say two, three factors here that uh, how, why Bangladesh has done relatively better than um, other countries. One is that though this starts, this slide starts with remittances, but I'll come to remittances later. Let me just, you know, discuss. Um, first factor is that the agriculture sector. Um, Bangladesh's farmers have done tremendously well despite COVID-19, um, the, the two harvests uh, that we had during COVID that in, we had experienced bumper production. So even uh, COVID, during COVID-19, the farmers did not stop uh, in doing what they do well, and they did really very, very well. And that's why we did not face any you know, crisis or we did not face any hunger or, or which, uh, you know, which is apprehended for many countries. And particularly, as you know, we are a very populous country. We have almost 170 million people. So that is uh, one of the strengths of Bangladesh economy. And, uh, and the second issue is that uh, is, uh, the trade, um, 
in fact, uh, export of Bangladesh, particularly the export of ready-made garments, that uh, had picked up uh, from you know September onward or, or maybe end of August onward, because uh, when there was lockdown, all the you know buyers, European buyers, and all the other buyers had cancelled the orders. Now, after uh, there were many appeals, in fact, from the manufacturer that you know you don't cancel the order, you can pay later on, but um, you cannot. Um, you please do not, you know, uh, cancel. Um, but um, but when the global economy had also the European economy, they also had started to uh, started to recover. It's, most of the uh, export orders had started to be reestablished, reinstated, and Bangladeshi manufacturers could quickly um, could quickly um, take advantage of that. Um, so uh, they could uh, ex uh, they could send their you know product, um, the items and their export income had revived to a great extent almost you know 80 to 90 percent of the cancelled ordered were reinstated um and then the other issue is uh, the remittance the you know um i think this is a phenomena uh, which is also uh, visible um, in um, in Nepal, that uh, while we are experiencing a crisis, we are also experiencing a higher um, remittance growth. The explanations of this high remittances during a crisis is that during any crisis, there is a tendency of you know of workers who work outside to send money for their families more than before because they are concerned and the families are distressed, so they would send whatever they can. So this is one reason. Secondly, that many of the workers had to come back to Bangladesh to the you know. Um, and they do not know when they can go back. So when they come back for good, they bring whatever they have, all their savings. Uh, this is the second reason. The third reason is also that the um, remittances have come through formal channel. Uh, as you know that you know, uh, many uh, prefer to send um, their earnings, their remittances through informal channel where they get a better rate. But uh, Bangladesh government recently, the central bank uh, had, uh, in fact, last year, they had announced that if they, if the remitters, if the workers sent their money through banks, they would uh, get a two percent, you know, extra. So if they have one hundred dollar, the mm -hmm. bank will the, give. The, 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 the bank will give another two dollars. Yeah. So, um, so the two percent of uh, they will have a two percent incentive that has also worked well. And um, and uh, thirdly, of course, the stimulus package I have mentioned. The fourth um, uh, factor for this yeah. revival okay. is that um, is the um, higher inflow of foreign aid. Of course, Bangladesh has reduced its dependence on foreign aid over the years, but, um, and it's uh, the share of foreign aid to GDP is 2%, but uh, during crisis, we see sometimes that you know, there are uh, higher inflows. Uh, we have seen during you know, the Rohingya crisis, specific you know, uh, fund had come for them, uh, during COVID also some specific targeted uh, aid had come, uh, which had also you know, helped the aid from uh, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, uh, Asian Development Bank, they had you know, uh, come up with support, quick support. So, that, so, uh, so on the whole, these five factors you know, had, uh, had a positive impact and the Bangladesh economy, which has a intrinsic uh, you know, strength uh, that could also cope with the, with the challenges. However, you know, having said that, of course, we are on a better footing, uh, but again, as we are observing the second wave across the world, now many countries which are Bangladesh's economic partners, they are facing challenges. Now, how those challenges will have um, 
knock-on effect on Bangladesh that is also you know, uncertain. That is a not uncertain that will have a knock-on effect, uh, you know, less or more, uh, one doesn't know, but uh, it is not, very, not a very good news for us. Um, and also uh, in Bangladesh, we are observing the second wave. Now, until and until, uh, until and until, uh, unless the vaccines come, and uh, as you know, that the re time requirement for vaccination, the, the whole nation, that will be a long process. But of course, I know the uh, many governments have uh, spelt out their plan, um, yes, vaccination the plan, and the government also, the government of Bangladesh also has a vaccination plan. As in, when they get it, they will start with the you know frontline workers who uh, who uh, gives treatment to people doctors, nurses, and all, uh, and of course, the government officials, the old age people. Uh, so like that, they have this uh, planning as other countries have done. So that's one. So now, so even if, you know, it takes another year to, um, to, to, uh, the, to come back to the normal situation, uh, we'll have to survive another year or so, but one doesn't know. I cannot predict that you know we'll be over. Uh, we'll be you know we'll be we'll do away with the impact of COVID nineteen and also the the side effects of the vaccination. How that will be? Uh, so that those there are many uncertainties uh, there, and also as I have mentioned that since Bangladesh economy is also integrated with the other uh, economies, global economies, so we also don't know that um, how the other countries recover. So our recovery will depend on the recovery of the other countries. So, however, as I have mentioned that in the, during the second recovery, many countries have also um, announced uh, a second uh, stimulus package. In Bangladesh also there are discussions and there are demand for more stimulus package. So the government might have to announce another phase of uh, stimulus packages needed for that uh, because the benefits of stimulus packages have not been enjoyed by all um, equally because though the larger, um, uh, larger industries uh, the export oriented business could take advantage of it, they could utilize it, they could take the loans from banks, but the small and medium enterprises were not being able to take loans as much as, you know, as fast as the other sectors could. So the disbursement is really low in that case. Um, so that's another challenge also that if the small and medium enterprises do not recover well, our job creation will not be, you know, uh, will not increase because they are the major sources of job creation. Uh, and also the other issues, because I'll just conclude by saying a few, you know, issue, raising a, a few issues that um, the, the government has, um, uh, you know, started to uh, act on the revival of the economy in many countries, but we also have to remember that many of the achievements in our you know, economic and social uh, areas, those will be uh, you know, reversed, particularly in the social areas, as you have mentioned in the beginning, uh, that Bangladesh's achievement in case of social uh, indicators, for example, uh, gender parity in school education, a reduction of maternal mortality, reduction of child mortality, women's empowerment. Um, so all these achievements have been you know, challenged. So many of those will be reversed. And also, as I have already mentioned, the number of poor people has increased. Uh, also increase. So the achievements are under pressure and um, as Bangladesh is also committed to implement the sustainable development goals, which talks about uh, uh, about economic and social and environmental um, uh, environmental um, quality. Um, so achievement of those will be um, very difficult uh, as um, has been, you know, uh, as uh, we have mentioned earlier. So COVID-19 had put um, a very, really a 
strong you know, challenge. Um, so I would end by saying that you know, we need to have a um, better planning in terms of you know uh, the revival of the of the economy and also recovering or gaining back the social back the social uh, improvement that we had already. Um, so at, at this point in time, the government uh, is. Uh, finalizing the eighth five-year plan for the period of 2021 to 2025, this plan will coincide with a number of milestones. Uh, of course, one is that Bangladesh is going to graduate from the least developed country category to developing country category by 2024. Uh, and by, you know, by 2025, the, we will be left with only five years of implementing SDGs. SDGs have to be implemented by 2030, as you know. And Bangladesh also has some milestones in the coming you know, years that by 2041, Bangladesh wants to become a developed country. So in order to achieve all these milestones, the preparation have to be really um, very, uh, uh, very extensive and um, the, the fallouts of the COVID-19 that have, have to be dealt in a way that we can also improve upon the loopholes because um, the, as you have mentioned that the inequality or um, the inclusivity of the growth that has not been observed as, as other many other countries. So we hope that whereas, as we plan as we work towards revival of the economy, we can do the now the, you know, the international aid is being said that build back better. So we can build back better. Our build back better would be that we will, um, we will uh, have a growth which is equitable. We'll have a growth which takes care of the environment, a, a green growth uh, and a, a uh, growth which you know takes care of the most vulnerable people i think i can stop here now i will uh, be happy to discuss at the uh, open session uh, thank you very much for your attention so, so thank, thank thank you very much uh, dr hamida and for your uh, systematic uh, presentation and is a very beautiful lecture. You have touched upon sequentially several aspects uh, from the economy to the social aspects also, and you came out with your some uh, suggestions as usual. So in the very beginning, you have given a brief picture of the Bangladesh's economy. And they are uh, during this pandemic also that how different estimations that varied uh, it, it varied in India also that uh, from Moody's study to government India, RBI estimates like that, because different agencies, they do their study at different point of time. So when pandemic started in February or January, so uh, some of the organizations did the estimation in March or April that what will be the prospective loss in the GDP. And some people studied in April uh, after that or July, June, so already they have experienced that uh, how much losses have been done. So um, that's why also, and, and there is also a, a tendency of every government to show something that now we are not performing that bad. That is also a government's tendency in general, every, whether it is in India, in Nepal, anywhere. So that, that's why maybe some difference that the government is expecting five point something growth rate, uh, whereas your estimates is 2.5%, isn't? I, I, am I right, I, I think? So that also may be a reason, but only we come to know when this, because there is an uncertainty how long this pandemic will continue that still people do not know. The only estimation that it would be a war by November, people are thinking school colleges will be open, but in India still some states opened only on a limited scale, not in many places. Students cannot give exam, this, that. So in first quarter in India, what is uh, we saw that 29.5%, around 30%, that is a contraction of the GDP compared to previous year's first quarter. Then, then in second quarter, also more than 5% contraction. 
but that is true only of the of the organized sector even informal sectors that is devastated almost that period so that has not been taken into account uh, some people even say it contracted more than 50% also but they, these are all uh, guess work and some uh, assumptions are looking at that and definitely the job loss that you have mentioned and there, there is no doubt across uh, and some um, online survey we made even in Bangladesh also in, in some pockets. Uh, some of my students from uh, different places they send their uh, views and the, and the reports that uh, the people during pandemic who came back from from the metros to the rural areas how they faced initially. Only only one good thing is that. Uh, these are uh, uh, again, and there is a confusion. Some people say the lockdown measures good. Some say no. But in your country, that after that Ramjan month, which uh, also coincided with that lockdown period, so that vacation, then uh, immediately they opened all the government sectors and others. That I, I earlier also I said that maybe that gave some opportunities to many people who are involved there. But as as in India, I, I was personally against that lockdown because. Uh, if the disease first uh, that uh, encroached upon the metros, and if there was lot, lot, no lockdown, I, I used to think that the people would be confined there, and disease mostly could be confined there. Yeah. Uh, since uh, lockdown, no work for longer time, people started even by walking to come back to their native places. So some of them carried the disease also. So that, that is another impression. But other people also think other way around. No, if there is a transport is on, uh, uh, yeah then it could uh, spread very fast. So they could have log, um, reduced this like that. So these are the things, um, some of these things we think. Then you touched upon the trade investment remittance aspect that how remittances increased during this period in the month of July. I, I saw the havoc increase during the month of July and August that, and, and from across the countries where Bangladesh is, uh, people work and they send remittances for their families and that is a good thing and everywhere this global supply chain not only global even within the country even in india also that we observe the supply chain how disrupted during that uh, period so some industries did not get the raw material so production is choked as a supply of labor is a problem so labor laws also changed by I'm some I'm states in india that, how, how to tackle so I, I will not go in detail much of that. So, so in order to mitigate when uh, there will be a withdrawal of the lockdown, that production should increase and compensate the earlier loss. So labor loss and timing of the uh, labor working hours, all these things have been made. And another thing is that agriculture also in India, as in Bangladesh, is considered to be a severe, that agriculture is performing better and uh, it will take care uh, of this uh, negative growth to a certain extent. But because of that um, interregional, that interlinkages loss, we see here huge regional variation of the prices. Still now we are uh, getting uh, here a potato at 60 rupees, which is unusual because every year maximum 20, 25 rupees this time it remains in Indian currency here. I, I don't know why the regional variation in prices is so much in Bangladesh, right? because it is not supposed to be even then, because in rural area they managed from their own uh, kids and kings and, and neighborhoods, some of these things that they manage there. And, 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 and what my personal observations, so many are happy with the limited thing, that is happiness, as in Bhutan that day in that discussion he was telling, that uh, though per capita income is less, but in happiness index were very high. So that is one thing. And, and on, also in that global link is oil price you mentioned there. <laughs> But they, but there one question will come about the sustainability of growth. How long this agriculture can give? If it continues for two years, three years, there is no certainty because here we saw those, those returnees from the metros who joined the agriculture, many of them suffer from disguised unemployment because small and marginal farmers are plenty here. So uh, they are more. And so if there are many brothers or sisters who are working outside and come back and join, Definitely chance of this guy's unemployment, how can they continue? And here, though, despite international crude oil price came down, in India also we saw that uh, price of the oil more, that is the final or retail price of the petrol. So more, more tax collection started because 
of the uh, government revenue to, to control that whatever extra expenditure is go government doing for the social security measures during this pandemic. So a similar uh, situation as in Bangladesh. But many of the social security measures here, what we see that, that used to continue earlier, only that that had been expedited instead of three months money together given one month, so like, like that. Not, not much that of reform change. And, and, and then uh, all, all you have um, also mentioned about that, that uh, dissatisfaction over the public investment in infrastructure and others, 25, 26%, that could be uh, some more expected because in this situation, uh, that, that government should come forward when the individuals are not. Because uh, definitely- This is pri one, private one, investment, uh, yeah, private investment I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we, we see that uh, rather to encourage and uh, the people and inject more liquidity in the market so that more uh, small and marginal uh, industries can come up, the uh, medium and small scale MSME, as you told. But uh, one still one observation here that people are not coming forward to take the loan, even if interest is very low. So it is like a liquidity trap type of situation because if there is a lockdown, there is a demand deficiency in the market. So where to sell, even if we, I start a new production or diversify. So until and unless the market linkage operate, so even uh, where is the incentive to produce by taking a small loan also at a low interest, how to repay that? That question also comes upon both demand and supply side uh, cracks is there. And food security situations very good, about 4% uh, of the GDP uh, that, uh, that is Bangladesh economy, they are using the government's remittance. Uh, they are uh, social, in the social security measures. And, and, and then you go on about the foreign direct investment and others and social welfare measures. And about the environmental thing, even uh, some people say that uh, because of lockdown, there is an environmental qualitative improvement of that uh, pollution is less. Even from distance, we can see the peaks of Himalaya. So, the, but again, when a farmer started burning in the Western India, started burning this um, uh, crop residues. Again, that pollution started coming. So, but, but it cannot be a solution that because of improvement of the pollution, all uh, journey, all the uh, communication transports uh, will be closed. People cannot move from one place to another. So that, uh, that creates another social dimensions because people cannot meet their family members. Uh, even now also, though it is open, as there is uncertainty. If I go out, whether I may be contaminated or get uh, pick up the same disease from others. So people are scared to move from one place to another. Tourism is uh, affected uh, severely. So uh, that I, I, I was expecting, whether Bangladesh tourism and how it is. Anyway, so that, that portion uh, also you may highlight in, at some point of time. And, and, and in India, definitely the healthcare delivery, that is also another important aspect of this and how it will go. And, and only that here, MSME here by definition also in their government change. Those who are in the medium scale industries now considered as the small scale industry. Those who are a little big, now they are small. Only by definition, they are shifted from other to another sector. So if we consider the small scale industries growth, there will be havoc growth because, because the, that capital is very high or employment is very big, but they are now considered as the small, which were earlier considered to be in the category of the big. So these are some of the definitional changes that have taken place, but apart from the holistic measures that we see and some of the, the rising uh, domestic violence case also uh, sporadic across places, tensions, I mean, uh, even the dropouts uh, in some uh, areas, the study is showing that it has been increasing. So how to bring back the children to the school? That is also a big concern. I don't know whether it has happened in Bangladesh also, where the dropout is there. So anyway, so I, I took a very long time, I think. Uh, so I, 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 I now open it for the discussion for the panelists. Uh, uh, Professor Helal was there. He, he told he is busy, he may go. So if he is there, he can give his uh, point, add to this, or, or he is not there. Professor Helal? Uh, I'm here, just uh, my, my office. Uh, okay. Uh, if you add to something to this, please. Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to uh, 
kind of get connected with this presentation. Um, uh, I mean, all of the stuffs, uh, Dr. Famida Hatun, Famida has said, but um, the way I understand, like, as you said, like schooling and all other impact, like environmental good things, everything is temporary, right? If yeah. we are back to normal, since we have the infrastructure in place, only thing because of this COVID-19, restriction on movement locally and globally are on. And if there is restriction on movement, that means the economic I mean, performances, obviously it will be I mean, uh, impaired, right? And that's what has happened. Now, how much impact on, an, uh, on a single economy? It depends on the structure. As you mentioned that in Bangladesh, we didn't continue lockdown for long. I think that was one crucial thing for Bangladesh. Like people say, is, is, is it life or livelihood? And our government did like for informal sector, for marginal people, if they are off from their livelihood and they don't have any support, significant or substantial support, they will die from hunger. Yeah. That's why when Bangladesh government kept everything open and there is no lockdown, then what happened? Like the restriction on movement is, is withdrawn. And I see ma many of the staffs like in place. Now the question is like, as you said, um, investment. Now investment like the stimulus package, you mentioned there is a shock on demand and supply at the same time. There is, there is shock from local part and global part. So there are so many things you cannot control. For example, you said when there is low private sector investment, government should invest more. And that's the way Bangladesh followed it. There is huge public sector investment to substitute the slow growth in private sector investment. Now at this point, government is restricted by funding. How, how can government manage funds? Because in the world, you see, every country is trying to borrow. And if we look at uh, our, our like debt GDP ratio, obviously we have capacity to borrow, but the constant comes from the lender's part. In a normal situation, when we try to borrow from external sources, we are constrained there in terms of getting commitment, in terms of getting release. Now at this critical juncture, we see that there is a problem for government because the economic activities are slowed down significantly, tax collection and the government revenues are restricted significantly. So if this is so, we cannot expect government to come up with that bridging invest investment. And another thing you mentioned that also Famidapa mentioned, you can give fund, but fund is only one limiting, limiting factors for investment, for employment, for economic activities. So here at this point, fund is not the only binding constraint. There are many other binding constraints. So you can relax fund, like for example, stimulus package. If there is a, I mean, slowness in demand, aggregate demand. And you know that as Famidaba mentioned, in terms of remittance, we see some flow, but we see, we can expect, we forecast like we'll see slowness here because of COVID and also another thing is like shock in well price. So there is a, I mean, pressure there. There is a slowness in your demand. Then you cannot ask people, even with reduced interest rate to maintain their activities. So that's the problem here. And it's kind of like, we cannot, uh, I mean, overcome this problem entirely. Only thing is like how, I mean, how efficiently we manage it. For example, like the, the growth estimates, like government is for this year, 5.2, CPD 2.5, the World Bank 1.6, right? So IMF 3.8, uh, I mean, Economic Intelligence Unit 1.6. Now the question is like, these estimates vary because these are based on different assumptions. Now, if I ask question, 
if I ask, say, like, say IMF, it's like 3.8. From where? What is the engine of growth? Now, if you cannot employ, increase your employment, if you don't see increase in your investment, both private and public sector investment, then only way you can expect higher growth is improvement in skill and also improvement in technology. But can we expect like increase in our I core incremental capital output ratio at this time? No. Can you expect any kind of like increase in our uh, technology adoption or improvement in technology? No. So at this phase, we cannot see any improvement. As I said, in Bangladesh economy, we are doing well, but still there are many challenges if you say sustainable economic development. The first thing is like, if you ask question from the perspective of ecological economist, ecological economist, then you will see that we are not accounting for depreciation in our natural capital. And that's a significant threat for our, our sustainable development. So this is there. On top of it, there are new challenges through COVID-19. COVID so, um, and also we need to see how long this, this continues. If, I mean, vaccine be becomes effective. Um, I, I mean, we are, as Pavida, Pavida said, our economy 40% globally connected. So it's a huge amount. 40% global connection and also for local production. We are, I mean, I don't know how we have calculated. We are I mean, significantly dependent on, substantially dependent on China and other part for our I mean, raw materials and all those things. Still, I, I'll say considering everything, I would say we are doing well. And as you mentioned that every government, they have tendency to show, I mean, better performance than what is, what is the real, I mean, picture. So it, it happens in every in the world. Bangladesh is no exception to this. But still, I would say uh, this, this is a smart decision for, uh, from our prime minister to keep everything on. I know there will be death, but even if everything on, still there will be an accident and all those things. But for informal sectors, since we can support people highly, for keeping informal sectors intact and also informal sector, it seems they have better immunity. So that's one like driving factor for our economy, I think. Um, if it doesn't, I mean, goes, I mean, it, it doesn't, the, if the, the situation, uh, COVID situation doesn't go down, I mean, very harsh, like uh, in the coming second wave, maybe you will kind of like uh, swing back. That's what, what I, ho I hope. Um, thanks a lot. Well, whatever, I mean, there, uh, Appa has said, and agriculture is always like, um, well, it's supporting, but it's 15, 60 per 16 percent of our economy. So 85% of the economy still they're, they're, they're slowed down. So um, I would be happy if our growth rate is 2.5 as, as CPD predicted, but I am also even pessimistic. I said from the beginning, if we have any positive economic growth, I personally will be happy. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you, Professor Elal. Uh, some of my questions, rather you want, <laughs> you replied, and <laughs> Madam, also you mixed some of the thing. Anyway, so the, in in my also first article on the COVID, also I had mentioned that that because government has thought that Jan hai to Jahan hai. Pahile, first you save the life and then livelihood practices. But I had expected there and wrote that there is an apprehension because of the poverty induced death because of the uh, increase in the incidence of the poverty inequality that may cause more death than whatever life will be saved because of the lockdown. So, uh, but that is also debated and, and how to prove it, that is also, and due to that uh, transport blockage, many people are walking thousands of kilometers and they died on the way. So many of the examples are there. So these are some of the things. So any, anyway, so it's a good that uh, many important points you also highlighted here. Mm, I, I think Madam can respond after taking some more uh, repercussions or uh, uh, questions or queries from other uh, panelists together. Okay. So um, thanks a lot. I'm just signing off. <laughs> I'll just yeah. I'll, I'll listen to. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Hela. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. So uh, may I may I invite uh, Professor Krishna Raj, uh, who is now uh, you working in now uh, Isaac Bangalore. So to give his observation 
and some points uh, thank you professor uh, putpal kede uh, and for giving me this opportunity and also impri and uh, south asian studies center uh, I, i am really impressed uh, by the uh, uh, lecture uh, given by dr pamina kathun she has given a very good account of uh, bangladesh economy under covid how it has managed and uh, what are the issues involved and uh, the some of the recommendations are really uh, worth taking by the government so most of the issues both uh, utpal and uh, mohammad dalal have covered i don't know what to cover but <laughs> still uh, i i try my best so what i understand about uh, bangladesh economy is that uh, the as a country uh, also uh, the uh, the good news the positive news are emerging uh, in recent periods so the most and uh, uh, foremost uh, um, uh, reason i can one can give is that the political stability the bangladesh has achieved as significantly showing on the improvements in the economy so i can relate uh, both uh, political stability and uh, economic improvement both are correlating each other so this shows that uh, the resilience is coming from political stability of the bangladesh so uh, uh, the lecture covered all the issues including the gdp growth rate i am really impressed by the gdp growth rate of 8.5% uh, before covid situation so this shows that how the emerge, uh, the bangladesh is emerging uh, as a, a developing country ra rather than a least developed country uh, in recent period uh, among the south asian it, it is the fastest growing economy among the south asian uh, countries uh, especially before uh, covid so this shows that bangladesh has managed very well from a uh, health point of view and also economy point of view and uh, this shows that uh, uh, the economic stability comes from the political stability and also the vision uh, the uh, the uh, the politicians have uh, we shared uh, we shared in the country so apart from uh, this observation uh, what i can um, uh for see is that uh, the growth rate even under covid period even though there are several projections by uh, various institutions and uh, they may be differ from uh, what are the observations they take on variables they consider for uh, the forecast uh, the economy is more resilient because it is 40% is in, uh, linked to the world economy and uh, the agriculture is robust in bangladesh and uh, even i i understood that even service sector contribution is 53% of gdp this shows that uh, when agriculture and service sector are robust and except uh, uh, the industrial sector uh, then country can uh, move ahead more than 2.5 uh, uh, 3% and more under covid period so this is the some of the um, um observations one can rely on uh, the data provided by the uh, bangladesh uh, with regard to the stability of agriculture sector as well as service sector the third uh, uh, issue i would like to uh, highlight is that uh, you know that uh, the uh, microfinance in bangladesh it played a very very important role so the uh, microfinance uh, which has a very good network in bangladesh and that has helped the poor people to come out of that uh, uh, poverty trap i can say so when bangladesh uh, was uh, originated in 1971 uh, take birth in 1971 uh, the poverty was almost 73% now it has come down to as per the pahimeda pahimeda uh, data 27.8% before covid so this is a marvelous achievement for a young country like bangladesh so the per capita income is increasing when compared to india so with because of the measures taken by the microfinance uh, network and also the government uh, the effort uh, to i don't know the distribution of land in bangladesh and but, but i know that uh, bangladesh has got a fertile land 
and uh, all uh, with uh, water resources being ensured, agriculture still can uh, prosper unless there is a climate change issues and uh, uh, frequency of uh, natural disasters. So in this way, the economy is robust uh, with the uh, available resources. They are made use of well by the um, uh, uh, country, uh, even during the uh, COVID period. The export is really good and remittances are very good and um, uh, the uh, employment is not much affected. And uh, this shows that uh, the economy is resilient to all these type of shocks, either natural shocks or uh, COVID related shocks. The stimulus package, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Fahamida has given. I, I uh, want clarification on whether these stimulus packages are, uh, uh, what are these uh, fiscal and monetary uh, packages announced by the government, whether fiscal policies are uh, uh, more or uh, the amount announced under fiscal policy is more or the monetary policy is more. Because as you uh, they as uh, mentioned, uh, the whole world is in liquidity trap. Even though you um, uh, offer uh, loan facilities and uh, the people may not come forward, entrepreneurs may not come forward to take or borrow loan and uh, invest it on the uh, economic uh, activities. So given this situation, so the fiscal policy play a ma major role when compared to monetary policy. So therefore, uh, I'm really a little worried about that uh, uh, figures. <clears throat> Further, uh, there is a lot of improvement in health, education, and infant mortality and life expectancy. And uh, what I observe is, observed is that the population of Bangladesh is uh, coming down. The that 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 gives an edge uh, in terms of per capita income, rising per capita income. So whereas in case of India, the population is the major issue. Not all India, but North India is the uh, major issues for uh, all India uh, in terms of uh, population growth rate. South India almost uh, stabilized in growth of population as almost uh, nil. Uh, so this is how uh, the GDP uh, uh, rates are, sorry, per capita GDP rates are, uh, GDP growth is uh, uh, estimated divided by the total population. So then since the population growth rate in Bangladesh is declining uh, and uh, the, the per capita GDP is increasing, that is a positive growth rate, positive growth one can witness, positive story one can witness. So if we take overall the, the Bangladesh economy, the Bangladesh has managed both uh, health-wise and economy-wise, and the positive stories we are getting in, from Bangladesh are really uh, very good for the South Asian stability. Uh, and meeting us. And uh, uh, the only concern uh, even Alal mentioned uh, that uh, uh, the sustainable development issues. Since I am an environmental economist, so how sustainability uh, will be these uh, economic development in future, given the climate conditions are uh, worsening uh, due to Paris Agreement uh, fallout. And also the Bangladesh faces severe uh, uh, natural uh, disasters, cyclones and uh, low-lying areas that might be maybe merged, submerged. And uh, the agriculture sector will be affected due to climate change and water resources. So given this uh, situation, how uh, and uh, the how the planners or uh, the uh, policy makers you know, come out with policies to achieve sustainable development and retain the the high growth rate in the coming years so this is how i i observed all the uh, this is a excellent presentation by uh, katun and she has given very good account of uh, the economy and health under covid uh, situation and thank you, uh, Dave, for giving yeah. me this opportunity. So thanks a lot, uh, Professor Raj, uh, for your important observations here. As, as happens in any any lecture or discussions, if whatever beautiful lecture, so people will give their observations, and it's a natural thing. Certainly. And uh, that uh, that gives us some uh, illuminate our minds. That is the thing. I, I forgot to 
mention here uh, professor abdul wadud is also here he is the uh, chairman or head of the department of economics at lhasa university so arjun shall we take uh, some more uh, uh, means uh, discussions or uh, she will respond and then we can go forward others we should take permission from fabida ma'am rather <laughs> yeah see so, will you respond now or uh, better together another um, i think i'll take it, uh, everything together and then in the end that I'll will go. be better thank you thank you so, so may i invite uh, professor uh, wadud please uh, your observation please thank you thank you very much professor paul kumar de uh, actually uh, i was uh, in a meeting with my vice chancellor so yeah. i did become, i did not become able to follow the full lecture given by dr fahmida khatun but i believe that fahmida khatun ha, uh, has given a very beautiful and very uh, informative uh, presentation as we know that the center for policy dialogue is one of the best uh, research institutions or think tanks in bangladesh i uh, i would just like to make few few observations or i would like to add some points as i did not follow the uh, follow the whole lecture of uh, dr fahmida khatun so i did not uh, i i i will not be able to make comments on her presentation but i will give some new observation or some points so as uh, we all know that the economy of bangladesh uh, like the economy of other south asian countries was progressing well its gdp growth rate was uh, very robust as we know uh, remittances uh, was also very good employment inflation all indicators of bangladesh economy are very good but the covid 19 uh, uh, has affected all almost uh, almost uh, most of the uh, indicators of the of the economy so uh, I, i would like to focus the Uh, the main points which i would like to mention uh, that the the covid 19 uh, has mostly affected the informal service sector in bangladesh like uh, like like restaurant service hotel service even the transport service especially the auto rickshaw trans pullar auto rickshaw service in bangladesh these services were were severely affected in in bangladesh but this 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 situation is recovering uh, this situation is recovering employment informal employment especially the the people who who are dependent on daily wages who are dependent daily wages they are highly affected by this covid 19 uh, pandemic and the uh, the female uh, headed household are 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 severely affected and although this situation is improving as i told and uh, some some reports mentioned that the government support uh, 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 was not sufficient government support should be more more available and should be more fairly uh, distributed so some of the reports mentioned that and uh, the sector which seems to be uh, affected now and in the near future is the banking sector I I, I I contacted some of the banking people. Uh, they uh, they mentioned that they are suffering from uh, deficit collection or deficit creation. People are not depositing money uh, in the banks or in other financial sectors because uh, uh, there are some reasons. First reason is that the rate of interest is at this moment uh, very low. It is like five percent, six percent. Uh, deposit uh, interest rate so people are withdrawing money from the financial sector or bank and they are investing in other sectors like 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 real estate sectors in the in, even in the rural areas people are making houses people are making um, walls uh, and people are re renovating their houses and other other things and uh, the banking sectors are not giving interest also if i deposit money in the bank they are not giving uh, giving Uh, giving good that uh, good interest rate so for that reason people are not keeping money or depositing money in the banking sector so banks are facing uh, deposit crisis and the other thing is that 
the banking sector is not also interested to receiving um, receiving the government stimulus uh, money or the money from the government stimulus packages because the uh, the banking sector is fearing that it will be very difficult to uh, recollect the money uh, from the from the people if they give money to the people if they give money of the stimulus package uh, um, taking from the government to the people it will be very difficult to recollect those money because the government is uh, giving a uh, government is trying to give some uh, benefit to the uh, to the creditor the government said that they don't need to pay the, uh, the the installment or the government said that they don't need to pay the installment uh, within the next next uh, five or six or three months and the government is also trying to uh, trying to declare the loan classification so for that reason the people are the people who have who, who have taken money from the bank they are not giving money back to the bank so and this this the government policy as they told that the government policy is at this moment not so wise or not so uh, robust or not so uh, so judicial or not so fruitful so for that reason they are not interested to uh, to take money from those packages so and as i as i heard from some news that the government has also uh, warned the banks um, um, as they are not uh, taking uh, money from the stimulus packages and they are not distributed money to the to the people so this is this is one of the problem uh, in the banking se sectors and this may affect the uh, affect the economic indicators in in bangladesh and besides as we all know that the uh, education sector in our country it is um, severely uh, affected as you all know that and in our country in the especially in the rural areas the uh, networks i mean all internet networks or online networks are not so strong and uh, most of the students or many of the students in the rural areas as i told uh, urban areas perhaps the problem is not severe but if we look at the rural areas the problem is uh, is somewhat uh, difficult or somewhat severe the students are not becoming able to attend the online classes and the thing what is most affecting is the is the psychology of the student the psychology of the students the students are not attending classes the students are not um, not um, um, reading well or um, they are, um, as they are mostly affected psychologically and all uh, all students of all all classes are affected severely and the government is trying to uh, trying to introduce or trying to uh, make effective the online classes but uh, we are not getting uh, getting getting uh, um, reasonable fruits from those uh, measures uh, we are not getting that and as we uh, know that the uh, the employment uh, employment in some banks also the employment uh, has been um, has been going down and and they have reduced the salary also some banks have, have reduced the salary also they have cut the incentive also so there are some discontent or the dissatisfaction among the employees in the banking sector and uh, but you know that uh, that the uh, bangladesh uh, uh, i agree with uh, professor pishto that the bangladesh economy is more resilient than uh, other economies people are very hard working lands are very fertile so the especially uh, during our uh, during our amun season uh, the uh, production of agricultural sector was very very uh, very very robust i can say the productivity was very high and our farmers has farmers have got a reasonable price of their products and they are they are very happy so although the contribution of agriculture to the gdp is is, is relatively low perhaps 16 to 18% but if we consider the consider the 
contribution of the women whose whose uh, contribution are not not counted uh, not counted in the gdp then the then i think that contribution of agriculture to the gdp will much more it will be more than 20% or 25% like that because you know that women are working in the house uh, in in agricultural works but their services are not counted yet in bangladesh so if those services are counted then contribution of agriculture to gdp will be much more so as the uh, people are very hard working and the uh, economy especially agricultural sector and other sectors people are also very hard working in, in bangladesh so as soon as the uh, as the as the effects of covid 19 will will reduce people will be um, uh, able to recover or able to um, able to do their uh, we able to do their work work very very carefully and very uh, effectively and although some of the uh, sectors uh, you know that the inequality women empowerment wealth consideration all of these are affected but you know that the just i would like to mention one example that the bangladesh government is also very 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 promising governments uh, especially the government the uh, head of the government our prime minister sheikh hasina is very promising and he uh, he she also uh, wants to wants to take um, sometimes very robust policies and she uh, also uh, um, also willing to uh, make effective all those those policies just uh, i would like to one uh, uh, mention one example as we know that the government has uh, made visible the padda bridge as you know that the government was very much very much uh, very much interested and very much as you, uh, as i told that uh, interested to uh, make this visible and the government has done that although there are many many uh, criticisms or many many um, things uh, regarding uh, this this issue so as i told that the people are hard working government is very promising and uh, 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 and uh, therefore the economy of bangladesh will recover as soon as the severity of the covid 19 will will reduce and i i believe that that will happen 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 very soon and other environmental issues as i told that these are i think these are very very temporal very very temporal and i would like to be very very uh, optimistic that um, these are very temporal and as soon as the uh, severity of covid 19 will reduce the uh, economy will will recover its uh, will will get back its previous high speed and uh, the growth rate will um, get a, will get it at previous speed employment and other things other things uh, will 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 be uh, will be like before before and the all the indicators of economic growth i think will i think will take its previous shape so uh, having said that i would like to uh, thank the impri uh, to invite me to attend this uh, attend this webinar and i would like to express my gratitude and thanks to uh, everybody uh, everybody thank you thank you so much thank you very much so <clears throat> thanks a lot uh, professor wadud uh, for your uh, important observations uh, uh, without going to any further details may i request uh, dr simi to give her observations or if any queries there please go ahead. thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr famida it was so wonderful to listen to you and uh, as a, a fellow fulbrighter i couldn't have been more proud thank you so much so uh, and uh, of course your points have been well supplemented by all other respected panelists so i do not have any comments but i just have some uh, questions which has uh, sort of uh, um, i mean it has uh, i i have been thinking about it for quite some time because uh, we wrote um, i myself uh, myself uh, dr arjun kumar and dr vikas kumar uh, had written a book on lessons on sustainable development from bangladesh and india uh, which came out last year from palgrave and um, 
so our comparative study uh, focused much on the on the lines of sustainable development indices so um, as we see that there has been an increasing shift um, or increasing focus on accelerating the shift from agriculture to higher productivity uh, manufacturing and services and um, this is actually creating some sort of a gap in uh, rural urban growth um, and then added to this is uh, the anthropogenic urbanization, which is um, which is actually creating some trouble for the anthropogenic climate change impacts. Uh, and there uh, and there is a lot of um, increase in the climate refugees. We are doing a project. Um, in the Bangladesh uh, Sundarbans area where we are um, taking or recording the lived experiences of uh, the refugees or the migrants because of um, extreme climatic events. So as a way forward, what are your views, ma'am, uh, in this post-pandemic scenario, uh, you know, because we, we want to be forward looking and are there any lessons that can be drawn from this? Uh, so if you could, uh, just briefly remark, uh, share your remarks on this. And I know we are, uh, we have overshot the time. So I, I will not take anything any bit longer. Thank you so much again. I really learned a lot. And thanks a lot, Dr. Simi. Then uh, I don't know whether any other panelists join. So before going to Arjun, just one question is in there uh, uh, online sent by Prakhar Gupta. Uh, he is uh, raising here a point, uh, what is the impact on the women? Because in India, his observation of the desertion of some uh, pregnant women, deprivation of the women, and uh, in terms of the giving facilities or domestic violences, all these that have increased during this pandemic period uh, in several places, that is his observation. So whether any such um, observations you came across in Bangladesh or that. Now, uh, Arjun, please give your remarks also. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so Come much. Forward. Yeah. Yes, I do not have, you know, much to say, very extensive discussion, but I really like to add that uh, Fulbright women are leading South Asia everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> really, other than all other uh, alumni, uh, here also our chief executive is, is Dr. Sivi Mehta and Pamida Ma'am. There, of course, a uh, few question which I really thought, and that was really regarding the credit or the liquidity. Most part of the package uh, in Bangladesh economy, what uh, ma'am has showed that the, as a percentage of GDP in India, we are also looking that at the percentage of our budget also. Uh, in India, our package, we made it, you know, uh, around 10% of the GDP uh, that, you know, around uh, 20 lakh crores in Indian rupee terms, uh, which uh, Fabni Damam really showed us that the 4% of GDP, that was the figure there. Uh, and here also in India, the effective rate would be uh, around 2, 3, 4% only, uh, just because of this factor, because of uh, this uh, credit lending. And what is also happening that uh, most of the, uh, the yearly provisions, that has also been again counted into this COVID thing. Professor Utpal, yes. So many economists are also saying that uh, uh, whether it is COVID induced or what happening, uh, nevertheless, there are, uh, uh, these are tough times and uh, uh, we all need to borrow to, to finance uh, all the welfare thing. What do you think, uh, 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 Dr. Khatun, that Bangladesh economy should do going forward, uh, where to raise funds? Should it be uh, uh, COVID uh, bond related uh, funding? Uh, what kind of uh, international transfer or how do you look that the government would use which lever to finance this. And there is also, uh, uh, since ma'am, you have also looked into other economies and travel all over the world as well, th th there has been a lot of difference between how we can borrow as a developing countries and how developed countries borrow. So the rules of the game are not the same. Uh, so how do you see going forward, especially in this, uh, uh, as a developing country, what we can do uh, to finance because our needs are much greater in terms of uh, uh, deprivation and vulnerability. So ma'am, uh, your thoughts on these things, yes. Over to you. So I, I think uh, I can request her to give her response, no? Yes. <laughs> ma'am, you can choose to answer anything, so many discussions. Thank you very much. No, I'll try to... Uh... Uh, 
I'll try to respond as, as much as I can, uh, but I also understand that you know almost two hours have passed. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, let me uh, I thank everyone for really uh, enlightening comments and also questions, observations. So, um, with regard to uh, with, uh, Professor Raj, he discussed about many issues, but he also mentioned that. Uh, the policies, uh, what is the policy in Bangladesh right now in terms of supporting whether it is be focused more on fiscal policy or monetary policy. But as I was showing that, you know, obviously it is now uh, more on the, is based on uh, more pol monetary policy, not fiscal policy. Yes, the it is bank-based policy, bank-based support. But of course, in a crisis like this, um, fiscal policy plays the most important role. And that is why in Bangladesh, there, is, there are discussions that more support, more financial support, more government expenditure should be increased, which will create more jobs. You know, public expenditure will uh, create jobs, will increase the consumption, and then the aggregate demand will increase. And that's how the economy will always recover and revive. That's the, you know, trend in uh, all the major economic shocks that had happened in the past. So uh, that is uh, obviously, you know, that's understood. That's the best uh, you know, policy sh that should be at this moment. In, at, uh, at this moment, and you also, Professor Raj, also mentioned about these, you know, uh, issues like liquidity trap and all. And why monetary policy is a dependent uh, stimulus package is not also particularly so uh, helpful at this point in time because you know ba the banking sector is already under pressure, under stress in Bangladesh. It has been going for quite some time and the health of the banking sector is not so well. You know, if you look at some of the major indicators of the health of a banking system, that that is, uh, the capital, um, you know, uh, adequacy, then non-performing loans, um, then, you know, expenditure income ratio, all these indicators are not so, you know, promising. So within a, a pressured um, sector, more pressure will, you know, weaken the system already. And also since we have a high non-performing loan, now in, you know, with the stimulus package, which is based on uh, liquidity support, it is apprehended that there might be more, you know, classified loan, more non-performing loan. Though the central bank has stopped the loan classification till December throughout this whole year, 2020. Uh, but you know, one can un understand easily that if you follow the trend of non-performing uh, loan, this crisis might, you know, have also increased may also increase uh, the loan performing loan. So that's why, you know, and fiscal uh, policy based stimulus package is always better since most of the people are uh, poor if they do not you know, have um, income right now and new poor has been created. Now, a number of speakers including Professor Raj and then Dr. Simi Mehta. I did not know you are also a Fulbright uh, scholar. Um, and congratulations, I'm happy to learn. And so we have very rightly uh, highlighted and pointed, pinpointed on the climate change issue, because you see, when we do grow, we forget about the implications on the environment and on the uh, climate change. In case of Bangladesh, of course, Bangladesh is at the recipient end. It is uh, the sufferer because of the activities of the developed countries. Um, but whatever is uh, said and done, it, the you know victim is, um, Bangladesh is the victim. So that's why, <laughs> We always say that our carbon emission is so negligible, but one has to be also careful. I know, so if we want to uh, follow a green growth path, so we have to, from now on, we have to also design our development in such a way uh, that it emits less, industries emit le less, transportation emit less, building construction emit less. So that is the, um, uh, Bangladesh has, um, has this um, voluntary, you know, commitment of the, you know, in the Paris, uh, uh, pa pa under the Paris uh, climate agreement. Um, so voluntarily it wants to reduce emission in case of power and transportation. So uh, that's a very good, uh, you know, initiative, I would say. And uh, 
as you rightly mentioned that during the post pandemic, as we are preparing for the recovery, the post pandemic recovery uh, has to be based on green uh, you know, recovery because many countries, European Union and some other countries, also South Korea, even China, they have they are investing on uh, green investment. So they're increasing the green investment. So uh, Bangladesh can also follow the suit. But on the other hand, we also have to you know, have more resources. Uh, resources are very important you know, part of uh, investment. Uh, so there is this understanding or there is this um, impression that you know if you just follow uh, environment friendly growth that will not give you a, the return as you would do a normal you know economic growth but but that is a, a fallacy that should not be um, uh, there we should be more careful more uh, aware of that and awareness building is also very uh, important and uh, of course academia the media they they all can increase their awareness and now the other issue of course dr wadud also mentioned about the banking sector i have mentioned the situation of the banking sector the banking sector dependent stimulus package is, is has a has its limitation and it's also risky um, there is this question by uh, prakar gupta on the impact on women yes in any uh, during any crisis the most affected people are the vulnerable ones and women are among the vulnerable ones you know though women's participation in the labor force in bangladesh has increased at, at present we uh, have almost 36 percent of the women are in the labor force uh, which is uh, not bad but not also good because 50 percent you know the population comprises of 50 percent of women uh, so however women's participation has also uh, broadened I mean, not only in the traditional agriculture sector now you know they have also as you know that they have also in, been engaged in the export oriented ready made garment sector at, in, a, in a large number most of the you know women are most of the workers are women but also in other you know services sectors they are there uh, but the informality of women is very, very high. Um, informality of work, 91% or almost 92% of the women, those who are in the labor market, they are in the informal sector, which does not have any guarantee um, you know, of continuation. So that's why they have been the first one to lose their jobs when COVID-19 hit the economy. And um, the other issue you have, uh, Dr. Gup uh, Prakar Gupta has rightly mentioned that <laughs> Uh, the facilities for pregnant women and also uh, violences it has also increased very much you know across the world and in bangladesh also during this covid period and during the lockdown harassment and violences within the household that has increased because we know that people are you know those who have lost they're all at home children are at home women's burden of work has increased tremendously uh, so their health is now at uh, you know at risk but also violences are happening. Uh, so women are in the end uh, are the victim and those women who were uh, doing businesses, you know, uh, self, they, those who were self-employed, those who had uh, small and medium enterprises, they have also suffered a lot. Uh, because their scale is very small, they have small capital and uh, they had to lose their, many of them had to stop their businesses and also uh, they also have to lay off their workers. And what is happening that though the stimulus package has been announced, but many women, we have done a study and we have interviewed women entrepreneurs across the country. We learned that many women don't even know that there is something called stimulus package from where they can take support. And and then those who know, many also told us that they do not want to apply because why? Because they do not get you know um, cooperation from the banks themselves. Though the banks are instructed to uh, support to provide loans, but women it's not women friendly. Firstly, they have to provide in uh, collaterals which do not women poor women they do not have, and secondly also many of the businesses of women they, those are also informal business informalization of their business business is there because they do not have trade license they do not have tax identification number so when they go to the banks they want all these documents and many also do not want to become formal so
So there is an also an apprehension. So all these problems have uh, you know, increased their vulnerability. Um, so uh, the impact on women had been um, had been multidimensional, in fact, I would say, not only economic, but social, cultural, uh, all, all this. And uh, the other question, Dr. Arjun Kumar talked about fund uh, and liquidity. Yes, it is a very pertinent question because, you know, Bangladesh is now uh, in the on its way to graduate from the least developed country, it will become a developing country by 2024, which means that you know, now, though the share of foreign aid in GDP has declined to 2%, however, in some of the sectors, the role of foreign aid is, is very important. For example, in healthcare, in education, and in social development, foreign aid plays an important role. Now, when Bangladesh graduate, it has to, take loans from the international market at a commercial rate with all other countries. So how to generate, and also as it develops, the demand for more investment, more public investment will be higher. If we want to address the issue of unemployment, if we want to reduce unemployment, create jobs for this young population, then we have. there's no other way but to invest. Private investment is not you know, gearing up that much. Public investment has to be more. And Bangladesh also has to, uh, has to um, improve upon the infrastructural gaps in order to have um, in a continuous growth momentum. So for all these, uh, we will need increased fund. Uh, so at this moment, uh, Bangladesh government is not thinking of a bond, uh, but... Um, no, many, you know, as I have mentioned, that they are probably uh, going to announce another stimulus package, which will be again uh, bank based. So there is a danger of it, but I don't know. I mean, maybe there is no other way um, but to depend on the bank base. Even our, you know, capital market is not so much operational or is not so uh, so much of a support to generate resources. So. All our economic activities are really focused on a sector, on that is the banking sector, which is not also so healthy. So this is the danger. Now, in future, how uh, Bangladesh will, uh, you know, generate more resources? That will have to be, you know, thought well thought out by the Ministry of Finance and the relevant ministries. Thank you. I would stop here because this discussion can go on, on and on. But I think, in the interest of time, I should stop here. Right. Uttal sir, you are on mute. Um, um, I just you... wanted to ask that, uh, what do you think the role of China can be? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yes. yeah, in the recent past, yes, you see, I mean, China has become uh, a provider of financial support to, you know, all over the world. Uh, they had a focus on Africa. Now they are focusing on Asia, also in other parts of the world, of course. And since there is an infrastructure gap in Bangladesh, so, uh, and ba China has a deep pocket, so they are coming in. And of course, Bangladesh, you know, needs uh, investment, more financial resources. So they have to also um, rely on China. Uh, and China is, of course, trying. It is a strategy strategic you know factor in here uh, bangladesh is located in a strategic strategically located i would say on the one hand we have big neighbors like india which has been traditionally our uh, friend and uh, partner long term partner but on the other hand there is this also the china which is a rising power so balancing between <laughs> these you know powers is a is an important you know uh, political uh, i think political strategy it would be so yes, China is um, coming forward with a lot of investment, a lot of economic support. Right, right. So without any further ado, Uttal sir, over to you. Yes. So this is an unending process. I enjoyed a lot the discussions that are uh, gone and I, I loved it very much. So um, similar, on the, the, as you told, definitely there is a glass ceiling, glass ceiling in, uh, in that uh, job opportunities are uh, activity patterns between the male and female. So they definitely that informal and uh, low occu paid occupations are mostly uh, occupied by the women. And in the higher and higher up when you go, the percentage uh, goes down. That is in every higher. And, and here in tourism sectors also that in, in, in the Northeastern part of this country, India, the women are in informal petty businesses in the tourist sites and other 
hospitalities. So they are also affected heavily. And uh, apart from the big, big businesses that is occupied by others. So anyway, and on this uh, financial sector uh, issues and the banking reforms, uh, we got uh, similar observations uh, from uh, Prasanth Banerjee, who is now uh, who is one of the director of uh, your BIBM, Bangladesh Institute of Bank Management. He also spoken to us a few days back. So uh, it's very good to hear. And I, I love to hear uh, on and on, but uh, we cannot because you also must be having lunch time now about 12.45 in your place. So around one o'clock. So I, I think we should stop or anybody else or June is there to contribute anything or speak. I am I getting know. enticed. You are saying Bangladesh and food. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 we can so, I, yes. so I should end here and, uh, and, and very uh, great uh, congratulations. This is the month of your great victory of freedom. Yeah. So only that gone, and we cannot forget that um, also. So, so many celebrations, but this year because of pandemic also some control is there, I think. But anyway, the, it is in the mind of the people only. They will release at home even a small gathering. Hmm. So thanks a lot for your uh, illuminating lecture here. We, I also learned and the whole IMPRI team on behalf of that, I again congratulate and thank you and hope that in future we will have a lot of more discussions and join uh, venture like this. And if you also organize something, we can. And definitely, I did not know. Sure. The very first yeah. time I visited Bangladesh is 2016. And oh, they are after eight, nine times I gone uh, from north to south, uh, east to west, uh, almost everywhere. Uh, even as I told that uh, twist day, I have a viva also with uh, Professor Wadud's department, one thesis. And uh, last month I did another one uh, of the of the um, uh, your uh, institute yeah, institute of professionals, University mm -hmm. of okay. that is uh, that yeah, was BUP. That, yeah. BUP. So the last year also I had visited that place. I stayed their guest house in their guest house. So, uh, that that problem or issues of that uh, environmental in the co uh, situations of the coastal region that study I, I had gone through so that, that they had highlighted many of such things from their real time data so anyway so um, you can sir visit more and, uh, uh, and thank, thank, thanks a lot so thank, thanks a lot so uh, many issues that's why I came to learn from various aspects and also all of us. And if possible, madam, please send yeah. your this PowerPoint. Uh, by yeah, I, I will. I will. Yes. Uh, I'll and and thank thanks a lot again. Thank you. I also and learned I a lot. And thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, this, uh, oh, yeah. this type of interaction. Yeah. OK. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day, you too. OK, Bye. Bye. Thank you, all our panelists. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Stay well. Bye. See. Bye. Bye.